You're listening to One Family, What's God Doing? Where we explore what God's doing in YWAM locations throughout Virginia. We can't wait for you to find out what God's doing today. Hey, welcome back to One Family, What's God Doing? Where we explore what God's been doing in YWAM locations throughout Virginia. And this is actually a special, special episode because, you know, Chris, YWAM hasn't been serving in Richmond for just a decade or two decades, or even three decades. Why has been serving in Richmond for four decades? So, man, Chris, tell me, what's God been doing over the last 40 years? Yeah, Paul, thanks. Well, 40 years ago, uh, Wyoming, Virginia became an entity, an organization, a movement. And it really started from 1980. There was a demonstration in Washington, D.C. called Washington for Jesus. And many... Christian leaders got together, including YWAM, and the idea was to just really seek God's face and to promote God's heart for the nation in the nation's capital. And the out of that came an idea that what if we started a YWAM ministry, a YWAM operating location in Washington, D.C.? So two years later in 1982, they launched uh, a school of government on C Street and mm. really close to the Supreme Court with the heart mm-hmm. of YWAM serving uh, to train people um, to bring biblical worldview into government. Well, from there, things began to uh, shift and change, and God opened up an incredible opportunity for YWAM to move into a over 50 or 60,000 square foot building. Wow. Uh, called Rock Castle. So, and that was in That sounds like a fun place to be. <laughs> yeah, Rock I mean, the castle. <laughs> it's very strong, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, so there. this was a very large school that had been built by the Catholic Church for um, Native American girls and African American girls, and really those who had been orphaned and didn't have a proper way to have an education. So they created a boarding school mm-hmm. and it had operated for many years, it was sitting on a thousand acres out in Powhatan. Wow. And they leased that building to YWAM for a dollar a year. Mm. And for several years, YWAM Virginia began right out there in Powhatan. And, and then in 1989, they ran into a situation where we had to see where we were going to go next because the building had a tremendous amount of work that had to be done to it in order to be um, occupied. Um, Today, there's a huge nonprofit trying to raise tens of millions of dollars to restore the building. Uh, It's really, really beautiful, huge cathedral. Um, But from that moment, uh, the Lord spoke to the YWAM team, and they pioneered two locations. One location went to Atlanta, and the other went here into Richmond, into the inner city right here into Church Hill and Fulton Hill. And together, that community started a ministry focused on reaching one of the most at-risk communities in the state of Virginia, really Mm -hmm. in many respects around the nation, right? And uh, since 1989, we've literally been boots on the ground in the city of Richmond, uh, serving the community, as well as doing global world missions. Wow. And when... Why I really got going in Richmond. Richmond was was struggling. Uh, I remember hearing that at times it was called the the murder capital mm-hmm. of of the United States because, especially in the '90s and in the mid '90s, there's a, a tremendous amount of homicides, and so that's a that's a difficult space for a team of people to commit to not just serving but living because that's what everyone was doing, right? They were actually living in these locations. What was that like? Yeah, well, I joined YWAM Richmond in late uh, 2001, right after September 11th. And I can tell you, my experiences of life here were quite different then than they are today. It was common to hear shootings every day, you know, that you Mm. could hear the gunfire. Um, I remember even in 2006, we had eight murders within just one quarter of a mile of our YWAM base. And to answer what was it like, uh, it was hard, <laughs> to, be, mm-hmm. to be honest. It was really, really hard. But it was also incredibly engaging because you knew that there was a reason 
why you're living in the neighborhood. You know, I think a lot of times in our American culture today, we move around a lot and we don't see our neighborhood as our home. We see our home as our home and then we we travel to places that we have affinities for. Um, but in that, in, those, in that season, I really knew and understood that God had a tremendous calling for us to bring his uh, kingdom right here in the neighborhood. So we worked a lot with at-risk kids uh, for many of those years. Uh, we had a ministry called the Character Club that was led by Thelma. Miss, we call her Thelly or Miss Thelma. And she had come from South Africa as one of the most decorated women's athletes in the world at the time. She shook hands with the queen and was wow. the um, rated the best field hockey goalie in the world. And so she had a wow. lot of notoriety and she left all that to, to come from South High, up from apartheid in South Africa to work with the African-American kids here in Fulton. And she just became their grandma. Mm. And, and along with her, many YWAMers through the years joined in. You know, another story that I really remember powerfully during that time was a ministry called March for Jesus. And we would go from Chimborazo Park in Churchill, and we'd have a big gathering there and of churches and believers. And then we'd strap speakers on top of cars and make a big parade mm -hmm. and literally take that parade march all the way down Broad Street from Chimborazo Park to the state capitol downtown and praising Jesus and worshiping Jesus. And then we would have a big, large gathering um, at the nation's capital. Janine Guidry was really a big part of, of leading that during the time. Um, really have a great appreciation for her. And what we saw, which is a mark of God's power in the midst of darkness, is if you th if you look back at the history of how Richmond has been shifting and changing, specifically in the East End, there became through years of of intercession, right along that path where we had this march, is where the economic renewal and transformation for the East End actually began. Really, mm -hmm. right on that footprint, you could see it grow and stretch out year after year. And so I feel like one of the things that the Lord really called YWAM to do was to stand in the gap, to believe that the Lord was going to change the East End of Richmond. And he has. Um, he's brought in many other uh, missionary groups and inner city organizations like uh, CHAT, Churchill Activities and Tutoring, came in. And in many respects, I see that they are even an answer to some of the things that we were praying. Of course, we weren't the only ones praying. But YWAM mm. is really key in leading out in that initiative where thousands of Christians from around the city came and worshiped and proclaimed Jesus and did service projects. We would uh, work with many of the housings, um, uh, other organizations to fix up houses and revitalize uh, the community through cleanup and, you know, all different types of projects to serve the mm -hmm. business districts. Um, and, the, and those folks in need in the neighborhood. So that's just a little bit of looking back yeah. at what it was like back then. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the beautiful thing is that there's actually so much that we could talk about. There's so mm -hmm. much that God has done. I mean, we could do a deep dive that would take a, a year's worth of these, what's God doing mm -hmm. <laughs> to get into it. But what's so great is even in the last few weeks through this podcast, We've been able to get a taste of how God has continued to pull from that. Because one thing you described is what's so amazing about authentic long game presence. I mean, that's what YWAM has demonstrated. 40 years of saying we are planting roots. We are staying at the table. We are showing love to our neighbors. And man, what a powerful example we heard from Jesse just a few weeks ago about when hardship came to the campus through a robbery, God prompted that authentic long game presence. And now YWAM has this ongoing connection with the community right down the hill. And so I love what God's been doing, but he's not done. And so how can people continue to walk alongside what God might be doing the next decade, two decades, four decades? Yeah, well, I mean, I would say volunteer. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, we have many short-term opportunities to 
engage with our long-term presence, uh, there's many, many different ways to serve here in the East End. So bring an outreach team, uh, a church group, come as a family, um, an internship, you know, just come and serve. Use your hands and your feet and your gift set to serve the community. The other is obviously to pray. And, you know, a lot of times we can say, oh, it's a good, you know, we need to pray. But the the reality is that is the basis of what we believe. Prayer really does change things yeah. like I just shared. So continue to pray for our neighborhood. Continue to pray for our city. Pray for our leaders. It, it really does. It has changed this neighborhood and it's going to continue to change this neighborhood. So I would encourage you to consider that. The other thing is, uh, I believe the Lord wants us to install a playground yeah. on our campus. We've been talking about that, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to put together a team and some of outreach opportunities. Um, you know, you could give financially, uh, but what we want to do is create a place where families and children can come safely onto our property and find a place of discipleship and rest and really be able to serve the mothers and the um, homeschool community and our YWAM community from our 16 acres of land in Richmond. Yeah, man, it'd be such a powerful way to see God work, to have something like that there and to see families and kids just thriving together. I'm excited about that. I hope people come alongside that. When it was, as we close out, is there a scripture that God's been putting on your heart? Yeah, there's a passage of scripture that we think about a lot in terms of our connection with Jesus, and that's John chapter 15. It's the abiding Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, but something unique about it is the word you in that passage is very unique in its grammatical structure in Greek. And the you is actually a plural you, meaning mm -hmm. together, not just one person. And if I, I want to read to you the verse, mm -hmm. but I want us to think about it instead of being the word you, it being YWAM or friends of YWAM. So I'm going to, I'll use YWAM in place of the word you. Mm -hmm. And as you were even talking about us having a long-term presence, remaining and abiding in Christ is what will sustain long term. Uh, it'll sustain us long term because it's Jesus in us, right? It's the Holy Spirit yeah. in us. So let me just read it to you and let this scripture permeate your spirit in a fresh way. So this is starting with John 15, 1. Jesus says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not bear fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. YWAM has already been pruned and purified by the message I have given to YWAM. YWAM, remain in me, and I will remain in YWAM. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and YWAM can, cannot be fruitless unless you, YWAM, remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, YWAM, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Apart from me, YWAM can do nothing. It's a good verse. Well, and I want to thank you for the, even for you, you've been seeking to remain in God, remain in God in, in through your leadership to help YWAM to press into this idea of remaining. And, and like we described, uh, why well, I was accepted that invitation to remain for four decades. And it's so amazing to see the fruit. So thank you for, you've been a part of a, a big chunk of that four years. Um, but also thank you for sharing just a bit of that history. And you know, I would encourage anyone who wants to know more. There are so many, so many stories. Just come and talk to someone who's been around and say, hey, tell me a story from the last four decades. So, you know, thank you for sharing and thank all of you for listening and not just for listening but for walking with us as we together, as one family, explore what it means to know God and make him known. If you'd like to learn more about what God's doing in Virginia, visit us at ywamva.org 
and join us next week for more stories of God at work. Oh,